So uh, thank you so much for your time. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm from Rock Antenna, Lina Marie. Nice to see you. Nice to meet you. Nice place here. <laughs> I think you will be very cozy here. Um, yeah, you have a new album. <clears throat> so much for Stardust. Um, the first question is, why is four in brackets? I don't know. Um, yeah, to be honest, so, um, you know, for people that don't know, the way our band kind of works is so I write the bulk of the music and, and you know, the, and, you know, I'm really involved in production and stuff. But then Pete, our bass player, uh, writes a lot of the lyrics and is really heavily involved in the you know, visuals and that. And sometimes I just don't ask because it's because he has such a he has such a specific vision about it. And like Mania, we, our last record, the letters are spaced out in this very specific way. And I've gotten asked before about what that means. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> and I, I like not knowing sometimes because I think it kind of, <clears throat> you know, it makes it makes it more of a conversation musically, you know, I get yeah, to... what it is to you. Yeah. Mm. I mean, I think the obvious answer is it's so much stardust and then the parentheses is adding that so much for stardust. Yeah, like it's a, like it's... Like, like it becomes sarcastic, but yeah, yeah. So the artwork uh, of the cover, it's not your thing. Yeah, it's no, outsourced. No, mine personally. It's it, like I said, Pete. Um, you know, really comes comes with it. You know, um, it was funny because uh, he he, uh, he was so. In, I mean, he he's so involved in it um, at any given moment. And he sent me over the over the course of we it took, we spent five years between albums. And over the course of those five years, he would send me so many photos of like, I think it should be this. I think it should. And I and I'm always and you know he has all these ideas and and I'm always like, I basically I just kind of I have a a sort of veto power where I'd be like I don't like that. But generally, I kind of I kind of you know I'm not I I I just kind of follow his lead, you know. So nice. And um, yeah, I read that you talk about your new record that is a delicious meal like <laughs> i was i was so um overstrained i was like okay a delicious meal why they said this for a record so can you explain that well i just mean like like uh my grandma doesn't cook anymore but when she did you know she would put a lot of effort into it you know and 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 you know she worked really hard uh to make it you know, and to make it just perfect. And then there's that that element of after, you know, when she serves it to you where she's like looking, you know, do you like it? You know, <laughs> and and I feel like it's like that. We we made this record really delicately, really, um, really carefully, really deliberately. And we wanted to make something that, you know. That's nourishing. <laughs> that's nourishing. <laughs> you, you know, you, you leave with a full tummy. Yeah. No, we just went, we just wanted to... <laughs> We just wanted something that, um, you know, we wanted to take our time because um, I think it's really easy to make records really quickly. And now, you know, you can, you know, I with with the plugins I have on my laptop right now, I could make an album in 20 minutes if we wanted to. Right. Um, so it really becomes a choice to, like, take time and, you know, and and focus on it. And that was kind of the, the point was to do something a little bit more. You know, intention. Yeah, like like when you make it when you make a good meal, it's like slow cooked. That takes you know all day. It's like that. You know. Um. Yeah, and you told it already. Uh, your last record. It's yeah, five years ago. I mean, five years, and you have very very much success with the last record. So, how much? How big are your expectations for the new record? I don't really tend to think about expectations, um, especially because I'm never right. You know, I, I'll, sometimes I'll be like, "Man, this song is great. This is my favorite song." And then, and then I, and then I bring it to it's the band. Yeah, this is good. <laughs> it's gonna be big. And then I bring it to the band, and they're like, eh, "We don't like that one." <laughs> you know, <laughs> so so I don't uh, I don't tend to um, I don't tend to think too much about success. What I do try to think about is just how we feel making a record. And um, there is this thing. Um, when we did our first, when we did, uh, Cork, uh, from under the cork tree was our first major, major label record. Um, I told my parents, I was like, okay, I'm still not going to college. I'm going to, I'm going to take a semester off and see how this record works out. They were very disappointed, but they were like, okay, we'll see, you know, and then, and then the record worked out. Yeah. Um, but, uh, 
We're going to go back to college. It just doesn't do yeah, well. That's what it is. Yes. <laughs> that's the truth. <laughs> um, but so, uh, but there was this feeling on that record where I was like, well, we only get one shot at this then because, you know, if this, if this doesn't, if, and, and I had no idea that it was going to be a hit, but more like, you know, my grandkids are going to be like, oh, you put out a record when you were, you know, like whatever. And, 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 you know, I want it to be something good. And so I thought about that again for this, where I'm like, you know, we should get back to that feeling of like, you know, you never know, like maybe make it like it's your last record, you know, make it with that kind of intention, you know, make it with that kind of, and, you know, hopefully we get to do, you know, 20 more records, but, you know. Yeah, in the same vein, I, I really look at it like I hope people enjoy it as much as we did. Yeah. It, it do, you know, and like that, you know, playing the songs live has that connection and that feeling and, you know, all that. And hopefully I don't have to go back to college. Yeah. <laughs> and how important, how important is your connection to the fans? You told already uh, it's very important to play live and um, that the people are happy with your music. So how important is the fan community for you? I mean, I think we don't exist without our audience, without our fan community. I, I think, um, you know, we're such a weird band. I don't think we're, you know, obvious uh you know, rock stars or that kind of thing. Why did you say weird? Well, because I mean, because we are, because I, because I don't know, because I don't like when we, when we used to, we didn't know what we were doing. You know, when we, when we would go on MTV and stuff and we would, you know, we were on, T, you know, there was this show TRL and it would be like this big thing. And, you know, there's all these people there and, and we would show up and be like, you know, just like <laughs> terrified, you know, and, and we've always been like that because there's just this, I don't think, I think, I don't think any of us have ever felt like, you know, like it makes sense. Like, oh yeah, I should, I should be on the cover of magazines. You know, it doesn't, <laughs> I don't really feel like that kind of guy, you know? And so, um, so I think the, A, I think there's something that our audience relates to about that because I think if we can do it, anybody can, you know, it's kind of the thing, you know, you, it's really about music and, and, you know, um, you know, and, and putting yourself into it. And I think a lot of our audience can see that. Um, and you know, I have had, I've, I don't take too much credit for this, but I've seen some bands come up and say like, oh, you know, we really looked up to you and that kind of thing. And I'm, and, and that, that's the point is that, like I said, you know, I think, I think you can do it. I think, you know, anybody can start a band and, and, and get out there. So I think, you know, the fan community, it's like that made, that made us, you know, we don't exist without that. And I guess that's the point is the the import import of the fan community is that hopefully, you know, th these kids go out and do their own thing, whether it's music or whatever, yeah. or movies, you know, whatever it is. Yeah. I think that's the re really important thing that the people um, have hope. Mm -hmm. um, and that's really, really nice. And uh, that the fans love your music. It's definitely. And your new, um, I heard your new um, album. And I think it's like your your music, I heard it like I was a teenager, 13, 14. And your new record, it's very professional. Every song is like a radio hit, but in a positive way, <laughs> in a positive way. Yeah. And you, yeah, and I think it's a really, really happy um Yeah, instrumentals, and you have uh, the small intros, and you have very, very, very nice details. How important are the details for you on this album? Yeah, that's huge. That, I'm glad you pointed that out because that was that was the whole point. Really, was that you know, like I said, you can make a record really quickly now. You can make a record really easily now, and I just don't see the point of making something just to make something. I wanted to make something that really took its time and really focused and and. You know, I, I always think of headphone records where where there's all these little details that you, you're going to miss if you're not really listening. And I wanted to make one of those. I wanted to make a record that had that had all these little elements that, you know, that when you're really listening to it, you, you, you pick up all these performances and all these little nuances and that kind of thing. Because I feel like, you know... Um, that's something I like in records. That's something I always, I always appreciate in records. And also that that's a thing that kind of like I, like I said it becomes a choice you don't you know in the 70s I guess people had to do that because you know that's the way rec you know records were you didn't really have you know 
you didn't have the wall of compression that made, you know, one guitar sound like a, sound like, you know, an, an arena. So you had to figure out ways to make things sound big. And now it's, you know, you, you kind of have to, you have to restrain yourself and figure out, you know, like how to, how to, how to make something like that, you know? If I was going to say, you know, records that 15 years later you listen back and you hear a brand new thing you never heard before. Yeah. Those are the best kinds of records that you get a new thing to obsess over in a song you've heard a million times. That's really, really nice. And uh, yeah, many musicians want to reinvent their music. Yeah. And um, wants to create like a new unique mm -hmm. sound. And I think that's different to your band because your sound is the same like in the past. So um, I, you don't get tired that you, that you do the same stuff? Well, I think one of the things, you know, it's funny you point that out because we have a kind of sound, but I think the sound itself has always been a little bit experimental. I think that was, you know, when you look at our first, we have a record, Take This to Your Grave, um, which was our first album, and that was really one thing. It was kind of a pop punk record. And the next record, uh, Cork Tree, right away I had this, I had this thought, because again, you know, from my perspective, I'm thinking that, you know, I'm gonna, you know, the band's gonna break up. Andy was in like 10 other bands at the same time. And, and you know, I mean, I figured everybody had other things going on. We weren't gonna be around forever. So, so I was like, this is my only shot. And so I wanted to do a record um, that threw out a lot of things, that threw out a lot of ideas and and kind of stretched out and wasn't just a pop punk record you know and so there's a lot of we you know that first record i was i didn't know what i was doing um but you know or not first record but cork tree i didn't know what i was doing but i was kind of trying to push for you know um there's elements of of glam rock and elements of you know folk music and elements of hip-hop and elements of all these things on there and i think we've kind of use that as a jumping off point where for the rest of the records we've been able to I'm really I'm really glad we did that because if we hadn't done it on that record I think we'd be making it wouldn't just be that we had one sound it would be that we had somebody else's sound you know what I mean because I feel like Take This to Your Grave was a great record but it was kind of a pop punk record a very you know there are ways to do a pop punk record Cork Tree was how we figured out how to be Fall Out Boy and you know, everything kind of stems off from there, you know. But I think it's a very, very good mix. Like, you have ballads on it. I think um, my favorite song is Heaven Lover. Mm -hmm. It's, um, is it is it right? Heaven Lover. Is it, is it spelling right for me? Heaven on your record. Heaven Lover? Heaven Lover, yeah. Heaven. Oh, Heaven I. <laughs> That's an I. Ah, no, no. <laughs> no problem. Sorry, no worries. So, uh, so I have... Um, we have different names. Yes, yeah, so we have ah, uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> he, he names all the side. It's uh, my favorite on this record. It's like a, um, yeah, a ballad. Yeah, it's a rock ballad. Yeah. I love this sound. So I think oh. it's a very good mix. So can you say your favorite song of this album, personally? I would say my favorite song is probably uh, So Much for Stardust, the title track. Um, there was something about that one that I made very personally, very, you know, kind of just by myself, you know, had this idea. And I I really didn't think it was going to be something anybody else wanted. And and I, uh, when I sent off, I, you know, I, I'll, I would email demos to, to the band and, and, um, I was really shocked that Pete liked, liked that one, you know, that he, he was like, no, that, that he's, and he, and in fact, I think that was before we named the record that. And I think it was like, no, that's the record. It was like, it became a whole thing. And I was just so surprised that it got past, you know, I almost didn't record it. I almost didn't demo it because I wasn't sure that anyone was going to like it. And um, so to get the whole thing, you know, the whole finished product with the string section, I wrote a piece for, for a string quartet and, you know, there's a brass section and there's a choir and, you know, there's piano and this. Yeah, there's a lot going on. And um, so to get all the way there was just really exciting and a big surprise. I didn't anticipate that, you know. 
So it's really important for you to have your own story with the songs? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, it's it's nice to be connected to the songs. I think this record, we are all, we are very connected to each of the songs individually in a way that we hadn't been um, for a long time, I think. Mm -hmm. um, you know, where we spent so much time on on each of them that, that they all, you know, that there's something more... Um, personal about each of them to us, I think. And your favorite song? Mm, I love so much for Stardust as well. Uh, love from the other side is a favorite. But uh, what's the one that's like... I think it's maybe... Uh, it has the, the fill. I'm not, sure. <laughs> I'm not sure, Phil, what else happens in the song. Like the, like the, what's it called? I can't think of it. Never mind. Is there any, any other, is there anything else about the no, song? No, I don't no, remember no, the yeah. one. That would have been the giveaway, I think. It has a kind of Phil Collins fill. Oh, oh, yeah. I think, I think that might be Heaven, Iowa. Oh, yeah. That's my favorite song. Yeah. Yeah. I just don't know the names. Heaven, Iowa, I Am My Own Muse, I think is... Uh, smash the guitars, yeah, yeah. I think heaven, Iowa, heaven, Iowa. I think this is game. I have no idea what's in. <laughs> I so, think we can hear it tonight, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a little yeah, listening session. Pete changes the names, you know. So we have like working titles. So we have the we have the working titles. So, so I don't know some of these. Yeah, but yeah, I think the one you're talking about is heaven, Iowa. Yeah. Um, um, interesting. I didn't I know that's your one. favorite. That's I forgot about that. That's neat. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, nice. Now you know more about the uh, the other one. So now the last part, uh, your tour. You're going on tour with Bring Me the Horizon. Um, how does it feel to go with, yeah, with big bands on tour? Um, what does it mean for you? You know, um, I think we've been touring now for so long that it, um, it becomes important to try and make it all feel special and make it unique. I, I, I like to think of tours as events instead of, you know, there are some bands that, you know, they almost have like a, a yearly thing. It's like, you know, they just, they're always on tour. And I like for it to be a little bit more of a, of a unique thing of an event. And so, um, um, I think that was a big part of trying to put together, you know, trying to f figure out who we were going with and trying to figure out where we were going. And, um, I know we're spending a lot of time figuring out the staging and what you're going to see on stage and stuff. Um, this is the first time, by the way, that I've, I've ever personally been involved in that because I, because I want to, I, I just, I think this record, we brought something out in us that all of us are just so much more excited to be a part of it now that, you know, that all of a sudden Pete's talking to me about, you know, about orchestras and I'm talking to him about, you know, staging, which is very not yeah. what, how we normally are, you know? So nice, so nice. So we are looking forward to your tour. I think now um, it's it's the end of the interview. Thank you so much. Now we can do the social media stuff, the the good stuff. <laughs> and um, yeah, thank you so much. And um, yeah, I will see you on your tour. I mean, that will be so nice. Okay.